Hi, my name is Ryan Harper, and I'm the host of Reporter's Notebook. Today we have Storm Team Nine's Holly Baker, and she's just also at her job. She keeps everybody updated with the day-to-day -day weather. And uh, Holly, do you mind introducing yourself today? I'm Storm Team Nine meteorologist Holly Baker, and I am the meteorologist for the morning edition on the weekend show. Great. Now, uh, you've been here for uh, a little bit of time. Um, I know time flies by quickly here because we're always on the move. Um, what can you tell us about starting as a meteorologist? Like, what made you want to pursue it as a career? Honestly, my grandparents. My grandparents were the people that inspired me the most. Nothing spectacular happened as far as weather. I'm from Dalton, Alabama, so it's not much of a lot of, you know, cool weather events that happens there is rain, sunshine. <laughs> now, I mean, that's pretty much about it. You get some thunderstorms, but mm -hmm. um, really it was my grandparents inspiring me. And the real truth is I talked too much as a kid. So what they <laughs> did was they would put me in the living room on every Sunday morning and they say, hey, Tootie, that's my nickname. They say, hey, Tootie, look out the window and tell us what the weather's going to be for church. So mm -hmm. if it's sunny, I'm going to say, oh, it's sunny. Or I say, I think it was cold when I, you know, my mom dropped me off or something. I say, I think it was cold this morning, so you're going to need a coat, Papa. And mm -hmm. that's kind of like I got groomed into that as a kid. And mm -hmm. then for Christmas, I started getting all these different weather books. And I started learning about other meteorology um, weather events and other catastrophic events. And then that just became cool because it was now where it's like, okay, I want to see this happen in real life since right. it doesn't happen here. Growing up and I'm taking different science classes where they cover those different weather topics. It's just like, dang, I really like this. And I love fashion. I love dressing up. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, dang, you know, I started looking at other meteorologists on social media or YouTube at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked how, you know, Really, it was the news, like the women in news. I liked what the dresses they wore. I didn't really see a lot of women doing meteorology, but women in news, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could wear that. And so that sort of like helped. I ended up going to school for it, and here I am. Nice, nice. <laughs> now, um, you mentioned that you grew up in uh, Alabama. So what's the difference between Alabama and North Carolina? Like, what did you do there for fun? <laughs> Alabama, honestly, it's just a very uh, Southern vibe. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I always when it, when I'm here, it's just like people say uh, North Carolina's the South. Yes, you know, it's part of the South. But like living in the deep South, it is totally different. Like even just the food, the food is different. You have, you know, uh, Southern cook, like Southern, you know, comfort meals. You have, you know, that Cajun side of cooking, you know, and Things that I did in Alabama, I went to school at the University of South Alabama, so that is in Mobile, Alabama, so that's where the home of Mardi Gras is. Mardi Gras did not start in New Orleans. It started in Mobile, <laughs> Alabama, folks. But, yeah, we did that. Um, it was a lot of different um, festivals we would have. I think it's more to do in North Carolina than it probably is in South and, and like, in Alabama. Right. And I say that because North Carolina has more, uh, it has bigger cities, um, so those bigger cities have a lot to offer as far as, you know, different things that attract tourists. Mm -hmm. Like Alabama is just more of a slower, you know, you have to go to like Birmingham to get that feel of like a big city because every other city in Alabama, they're, they're big enough, but they're not like a Charlotte, you know, or a right. Raleigh. I know that everybody's schedule is hectic and, you know, we're in North Carolina, so the weather can be, in, in one day, it can be super hot, super cold, super wet, super dry. Uh, what does your day-to-day -day look like when it comes to preparing weather reports? Okay, I'll give you the Jerry rundown <laughs> of what you need to follow on your okay. shift. So basically, you know, you get in at like at least three hours before you're on air. And in a case where there is a weather alert day or there's just severe weather that you've been, you know, watching and until it comes, you'll come in on your scheduled shift. Me, it's 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. But on a good day of weather, let's say I'll come in at about 3 a.m. 
and I'm on air by six. So during that time, you do all of your necessaries, like you do the Alexa, you do all your radio hits, mm -hmm. you update the website so that people that aren't tuning in like to television, they're able to just Google the weather, type in WNCT, and everything that is on the website is what we work on and we put it out there before we go on air. Um, as far as my forecasting goes, I look at all the different things. I look at the SPC, which is Storm Prediction Center. So that kind of gives you more of a gauge of what is the outlook. Is it a marginal risk, a slight risk, you know, enhanced risk? Um, you look at National Weather Service as well, NWS, and you kind of see what they're, you know, doing as far as their numbers. I also look at um, other sites like Pivotal Weather, I look at College of DuPage, and I kind of look at just look at different levels of the atmosphere. What I was pretty much taught in college to look at, you know, every level. I look at all what all of the different models are saying. I compare those models. Um, I compare each of them and kind of where there is a continuity of, you know, what are they all saying that is the same. That's sort of what helps me get a better gauge at what I'm going to say to the public. And I just kind of, you know, put it in the simplest terms so people can understand. So that's about my day to day before I get on air. Then once I'm mm -hmm. on air, that's the easy part. And then after that, it's just you do some clean house things, make sure you're putting everything back and, mm -hmm. you know, making sure you need if you need to stay, you stay and let the directors know. If not, then, you know, you just pretty much go home or continue working on something else. For me, I'll work on my franchise, Heating Up with Holly. Right. So, you know, that's that's a good segue. Um, your Heating Up with Holly segment is really, um, it's it covers a wide assortment of, you know, bases and things like that. I've seen the, the dress up segments. I've seen the cooking. I, I myself cannot cook. So I'm always seeing you. I saw one recently. What was it? A uh, cheesecake mini mm -hmm. uh, episode. I was just like, oh, God, I need to get better at cooking. So... How did you come up with this segment and what topics to cover? Okay. Well, I came up with the name Heating Up with Holly. One is my name, um, mm. Holly. And I'm like, what weather term I could use to, like, tie this in and make it cool? And it's like, okay, there's heat. You know, with, you know, that could have been hurricane, but then it would have been just centered around hurricanes. But heating up means, you know, I could talk about cold weather you know, and or when it's already hot outside, it's already heated up, you know. So that's kind of how I came up with the name as far as the concept of me talking about science, talking about fashion, talking about food, all those different things. It plays a role with weather as well. When it's cold weather, you're going to want soup. So I can talk about, you know, the types of food I would make for cold weather or seasonal, you know, if you're talking about like for instance, Easter is coming up, so you know you want to know what you're going to be cooking for Easter. So those that's a reason why I did that as far as wanting a food segment. And besides, if I did not go to school to be a meteorologist, I would have went to school to be a chef. That mm. is my second love is mm -hmm. cooking. Um, as far as my fashion part, um, I love to dress up. I've loved it since I was a kid. I love the most wackiest fashion pieces. <laughs> like, you could go in the store and be like, yeah, I don't think I like that. And I'm the person that's going to buy that item just because everyone else doesn't <laughs> like it. I know I can do something with it. I can make right. something shake for it to be like, <laughs> voila. So yeah. Um, that's how I came up with the fashion thing, but I wanted to tie it into weather. So I'm like, hmm, you know, sometime when you're in that transition between seasons, you know, people get confused on how should I dress today? So I wanted to include weather into another passion I like, which is fashion. And so I added fashion as another slot. And then science. I love do-it-yourself science projects. I love just talking about other things that how weather affects science, like or affects affects other things, like for instance with gas. I did a segment on gas, um, and how weather affects gas, and that's based on the time of day you get weather and the science behind that. So I don't know, science is just my you know my other passion because one, I am a scientist, I am a meteorologist, so that's mm -hmm. you know that that's why I had to incorporate that in there as well. Where can people find you for the latest updates on your career? Um, you can follow me on social media. You can follow my Twitter, WX Holly, um, H-O-L-L-Y. Um, you can also add me on Facebook or 
you know, follow me on Facebook. I post all my cool weather things and things that I'm doing in life, going hiking and all the other vacations that I plan to take in the future. And that is just follow my page, Holly Baker, on Facebook. And I mean, that's how you can keep up with me as well as you can always tune in and watch me every weekend on Saturday and Sunday mornings starting at 6 a.m., and the duration of the show on Saturday it ends at 7.30, and then on Sunday it ends at 8 o'clock. And mm -hmm. these are all a.m., so you can wake up with me on the weekend, and I can help you have a bright weekend every weekend with my personality. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day.